In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take your Docker streaming server and use it as a transcoding server for Twitch and YouTube and so on. Now to start things off in this video, there are some prerequisites. This video assumes you're using Docker with Nginx RTMP, uh, an image for that. Uh, there will be a link in the video description for the playlist showing how to get to this point if you're not already here. This includes installing Linux, setting up Docker, setting up the Nginx RTMP and so on. And that leads us to here. So today I'm going to show you how to take Docker and turn it into a transcoding server. What this basically means is you're going to be streaming your gameplay from OBS to the server and you're not gonna just stream it out to other services. You're going to transcode it. it. Means you're gonna take this high resolution feed of video that you're sending to the server and the server is going to convert it or encode it and then distribute it out to its various sources. Now, <clears throat> doing this isn't for performance. It's for quality. It's so that you can play your game as you normally would, and achieve the best possible quality stream on Twitch and so on. Basically, you're taking the second computer and using up all the processing power it has to do this conversion. Anyway, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to log into our Docker image. So, we're gonna open up a terminal. Next, we're gonna type Docker container ls so we can get our docker image id container id i'm going to copy that and then we're going to type in the following command docker space exec space dash it space paste the image id space bash all right so now we're basically logged into our docker container and now we're going to install FFmpeg, which is actually going to be doing the brunt of the conversion. Okay, so type in the following command, apt space install space FFmpeg. It's asking you, do you want to continue this installation? And we'll select yes. Okay, with FFmpeg installed, now we can do a few things. Let's just make sure. Okay. I just typed in FFmpeg to make sure it's running and it's registered, so it is. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our Nginx configuration file. To do that, type in the following command, nano space forward slash etc forward slash nginx forward slash nginx dot conf. Okay, so this is the configuration file we were using before with our previous videos, exactly the same. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be modifying it a bit. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna stream via OBS at a very high bit rate to this server, like 30,000 uh, kilobits per second. Where is it? Yeah, right here, 30,000 kilobits per second. I'm still using my video card, but I'm not using the extra settings which use more GPU power but I'm using a very high bit rate, 30,000. So what's coming through on this stream is extremely good quality. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be removing this push command. First and foremost, delete that push command. I'm also gonna be giving you a command that um, will be linked in the video description. It'll be a, a, a Google web page published link, as you can see here, with the full command. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna paste the command you copied here. Now, if you get something like this happen where it's just this little blurb and you scroll back, it's like all in one line and it's off center. What you're going to want to do with this is you're going to want to delete this line. I'll show you what to do. It's a very long piece of text. Now that it's deleted, you're gonna to wanna to hold the escape key and press L. There we go. Hard wrapping of overlong lines enabled. Now when I paste, it won't uh, 
do what it did. There we go. So I can work with that now. It's not perfect, but I can work with it. All right. So this is a very basic command. What I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, FFmpeg, here's the source stream. I want you to encode it using X264 at a frame rate of 60 frames a second. Uh, profile high, level 4.2, tune is film. The preset very fast. Threads zero, which means it's automatic for the processor threads. Um, this forces the uh, bit rate. This is uh, part of the timing for uh, the key int is part of the timing for 60 frames a second. Q comp forces the encoder to actually adhere to the encoding um, settings. And scene cut because Twitch by default, um, OBS and most of the live streaming platforms automatically set your scene cut to zero to reduce latency. You also have the bit rate of 6,000, the max bit rate of 6,000. So 6,000, 6,000, that's the bit rate we're going to hover at. And a buffer size of 6,200, uh, a little bit uh, over the 6,000, which will introduce barely any latency but it is required to keep the stream a little more stable um you're copying the audio and you're encoding it to the flv uh, format that's required for streaming and then the output stream location so all we have to do with this piece of code is i change take application live right here so i change your source rtmp stream to live Ooh. forgot this is this is not uh this is a text editor so i gotta Move with my with my arrow keys to here. Type in live. Okay. And the output stream, I set it to stream out. Again. Gotta use the arrow keys. Okay, so right off the bat. This is a perfectly good encoding setting. This will give you a very fast encoding, but what you can do with this other server now is you could change it from very fast, should you need more, and let's say change it to medium. Now, I don't know if your, your secondary computer can handle that, so maybe you could set it to fast. Fast is still a, a pain for some systems, but if your system can handle fast, medium, or even slow, then you can simply change that, and if your system can keep up, you're good to go. Um, as the other video said, set your live stream outputs and so on, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, we've got the basic encoder setting set there. That's good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to save the file. It's going to ask, do I want to save it? I say yes. Oh, and it was control, control X or Z to save. Um, we're going to write the file name, press enter. Okay. This file is saved. Now what I can do. Hold control press D. There we go. And that save that exits out of the um, Docker container bash. Now we're gonna go to we're gonna do the following container ls. We're going to copy the container ID again. Okay. Docker container stop paste and then we can just go back and change stop to start okay darker container ls okay it's not restarting which is good because if your container started restarting constantly that means you damaged something in the configuration file and there's a whole nother process to fix that but this should be perfectly fine now let's test this thing out First and foremost, I'm going to open up my OBS again. I think I left it on fast for the encoding profile. We're going to start streaming to the server. Uh, and OBS is saying we have a connection. Now, we have two links we can look at now. We can look at the previous live one. This is what I'm feeding. Okay, let's try that again. VLC crashed. All right, so we can look at the source I'm feeding to the server, which is right here. That's the raw feed of the good quality. Or I can look at the encoded sample. So for that, uh, we're going to go to network stream. 
And uh, okay, RTMP colon slash slash for my setup one two uh one seven two dot one eight dot nine two dot two four slash and I believe the other RTMP link was stream out. All right, there you go. This is what's being encoded by the server. It's actually okay. Now, keep in mind, this video isn't about fine tuning those settings perfectly. I'm going to make a whole nother video in regards to just doing that, to really tweaking FFmpeg settings out. But this is just to show you how to enable a streaming server. So let's just take a quick look at what we got. We can bash right into the system again. Go back to the configuration file. Right now we're running a fast preset. Now I'm doing all of this from the same computer. This is not what I would normally do, but let's see if we can figure it out. Right now, using this setting, my CPU is using 33, 34% of its power. So if this was another system of equal value, I'd be under utilizing my system at this point. So we could probably set this sucker to medium. Okay, let's do that. Let's just give it a shot, why don't we? Okay, medium. Okay, hold control, press X to save. Save, yes. File name, yes. Okay, we're good on that. Hold control, press D. Okay, beautiful. We're going to stop the container. I'm gonna start the container. And OBS disconnected, it should reconnect automatically. There we go, it reconnected automatically. Beautiful, let's uh, restart that video stream. Okay, we're gonna go to here, to VLC, and we're gonna look at my stream out link again, and VLC crashed again. <clears throat> That's one thing I hate. I hate when VLC does that. All right, we'll go back, stream out. As I said, now I'm running on a medium encode. Now, how's this look? Let's see. All right, that's not bad at all. That's pretty damn good. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at this. Mind you, I'm only running a, um, a Ryzen 3700. And um, encoding Battlefield right now at a medium is taking uh, about mm, 50 to 55% of my CPU. So it is kind of you know stressful on a system to do that. Uh, but, you know, there's still room. I might be able to even get slow out of this damn thing. Here you go, guys. It wasn't too bad with uh, the previous videos. We set up Docker. We set up all this other stuff. And now we have an, a transcoding server that all I have to do is start OBS. And it does its job. It handles everything. So for my main PC, I can stream at a high bit rate, probably even a lower uh, CPU setting if I was using my CPU encode. I was, when I say lower, I mean a faster, so it uses up less CPU power. And uh, have a great looking stream at the other end. So there's no reason not to do this, especially if you have another system doing nothing. You might as well take advantage of the, you know, the quality that you can gain from doing something like this. I mean, this right off the bat, I would never be able to get these settings from my C CPU the, the system I'm gaming in, I couldn't get these settings via CPU and code from the same system. I would have to do this. And doing this, I had now have a stream that looks really clean, really good, and that would stream to Twitch and YouTube and all these other sources just fine and look beautiful. So I recommend you guys give it a shot, give it a try. Um, yeah, that's it. So anyway, guys. As always, if you like this video and you want more like it, do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video to anybody you know who might be interested in it, of course. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.